Dynamic banter. I can see my gun in the middle of the blood. Dynamic banter. Ding, 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 bells in the air. Dynamic banter. Doing it in the stream. Dynamic banter. You know what was fun, Mike? What? Before we begin, guys, welcome to the show. You know what was fun, Mike, for me? What's that? To have a nice little sing song with you and no one else. Yeah. I didn't even hit record. These were these were gone. Yeah, but fuck those things. What are those? These are actually cameras. <sighs> All three of them. Mike, welcome. Guys, welcome. Everyone, welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome to the show, Steve. No one ever welcomes you to the show. I, I think you've welcomed me to the show. You know, Steve, I sat down and I was like, I got everything. And now um, I'm without beverage. Um, I'm chock full of that. You got to get a beverage. I got to get a beverage. Come on, man. We're but sitting just, here for an hour, sometimes hour and a half. I fucked with the lights and I was fucking with the cameras. And I was fucking with the action. Hmm. And now I'm beverageless. Well, I can you I can stall and I can do a little something with the audience while you go get yourself a little something. What are you gonna do? Well, I was gonna maybe pull up these diamond dynamic banter stems and have some fun with those at one more again. Man, that's cool. Ooh. Dude, this is the studio thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. damn. I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> hey, you didn't have the mic on by my mouth, did you? Absolutely not. Why would I ever do that? <laughs> Drummer, let's go. One, yeah, three, yeah, nine, yeah. One, yeah, three, yeah, nine. One, yeah, and three, and nine, and three. Now I'm a big gorilla in the jungle. <laughs> hey, can we cut it? Can we cut it? Can we cut it for big just one? Gorilla in the jungle. He can't hear us. Is that the problem? Big gorilla in the jungle. Because where I thought. Big gorilla. Has he taken his headphones off? I'm a big gorilla in the jungle. Okay. Because he's doing the gorilla thing, and we don't need it on the track. Who ha? Who ha? Has Who's no idea as my guy. sex with his wife tonight. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Greg. Here comes great the keys. Job. <laughs> now he was just in here. He knows not to talk. <laughs> He's being pretty silent while he does that. Fuck. Why isn't he doing the gorilla in the jungle thing on his <laughs> instrument? Who is gonna bang his wife tonight? <laughs> this guy, yeah, this guy, yeah. All right, big gorilla in the jungle. Who's clapping? <laughs> he's clapping and playing the drums. Yeah, drum. he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a good drummer. The drums stay drumming in the air because he's going so fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what's idle up? sticks. Mike, uh, you and I are going to the East Coast so soon. We certainly are. On December the 1st, we'll be in Boston, Massachusetts. Somerville, specifically. I feel like I'm at the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> and then I on December seen. 2nd, we'll be in Brooklyn. Now, I asked a couple days ago for a ticket update on this. They're about half sold out. What is that? Is that me? I'm getting a package. What do you think about that? Could I be love anything. It. I love to get a package, buddy. Um, I love it. I love it for you. I love it for Zoya. So yeah, December first, we're in Boston. Please buy tickets to that. There <laughs> is. I updated the link on the Instagram of Dynamic Banter, so it's there. It's also on my Instagram, the direct.me <laughs> link that takes you to all these shows. Boston on the first, Brooklyn on the second, Bridgeport, Connecticut on the third. Uh, thank you. Now you're not going to be there for. Do you know the date you're leaving? I'm leaving on the 5th. The 5th. 
That's a Sunday. That's I'm, the day that the Boston show is, or the um. I'm Bridgeport. leaving the morning of yeah. our second show. You want to get out of there right before it starts. I don't want to do the second show. No, Steve will be at both shows. Yeah, uh, I'm getting the hell out of the East Coast though. <laughs> yeah, you know me, man. I'm a West Coast boy through and through. I got that West Coast blood seeping through my veins. Got seawater in it. So you can't possibly be in another part of the country for five days. No, man. <laughs> and you that's know, why you're going to stay the way. <laughs> West Coast have a feud, Mike. Since no. the beginning of time. No, it's they manufactured. Were the East, there were the West Coast homo sapiens. Those are the men who date other men. And the East Coast homo, homo erections. <laughs> And those mother <laughs> bastards have been fucking each other and fighting each other and yeah. sucking and fucking and that's why since the beginning of time. Sunday. And that's why I get, gotta get the fuck out of New York. Yeah. You're gonna get beat up when you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm fine. Whatever. I, I just, it's, you know, it's also not cheap to be on the East Coast for an extended amount of time. No, it's the not... East Coast is the most expensive coast to be on. Well, there's two coasts that are pretty expensive. I can think of one. The North Coast... And the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at number three, though, the East um, Coast. Whatever. I, I just, you know. You just, I get and it. also, it's Christmas time. I'm trying to save some them Samoans. Yeah. Gonna be, I mean, get my nice Christmas gifts for my nephews and mama. My mommy's got to get My mommy wants to have a nice gift, probably. Uh-huh. She's going to tell me, me, I want a new. If you help me stay Please. on the East Coast for one last day, yeah, I can see my miho for one more day. <laughs> she is. Here's a cut from Steve's mom's album. <laughs> <laughs> I Damn. wish you could do that as a drummer. Can you do that? As long as you're not mic'd. You can say whatever is, the fuck you want Everything is mic'd there. in there. It's all mic'd. What about at a live show? Yeah, then no one can hear shit at So you can show. say whatever you want back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those dental read, sauce. Someone in the crowd's like, I can read lips, and I swear to God, the drummer is just saying dinosaurs over <laughs> and over again. It kind of keeps them on beat, dude. The coolest drummer was uh, there was a drummer for this band called Mute Math who had a click track. He had click track headphones on his head, and he used to duct tape them onto his head. Oh, I love because that. Because he would be so he's thrashing out of around, he and you can't have that click track come no, on. No, you can't. Dude, I so love important. it. There's all sorts of types of musicians out there. Some people got their click tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when we go? Uh, when we go to a new segment on the show? Yeah. Dynamic banter. But we're in the same conversation. Yes, we are. <laughs> but we have to stop now. Okay. All right. What else do you want to talk Mike, about? Mike, we talked about something. Excuse me. There's some people who are in trouble that are being very rude outside. Yeah. And that's what you don't think about when you call the ambulance or the cops. Don't How think is this going to disrupt podcasts being recorded <laughs> yeah, in the area yeah don't you think there's somebody else who's in trouble as well who when, could use that when i need to be saved by an ambulance mm -hmm. or if i mean come on <laughs> i want to disrupt so many podcasts yeah okay i want to be able to listen to someone's podcast and go do you hear that siren in the background that's me that's the one i was in <laughs> that's my bad that's my fault after George. So this morning, Mike and I were outside. Yeah, weren't we? Weren't not to brag. <laughs> what if we weren't on a show? And I was like, this morning, Mike and I were outside. Uh huh. Us. Yes. You and I were outside this morning. Mike and I were outside. Yes. And we were talking about uh, street sweepers. Yes. The vehicle. Not the guys from Chim Chim Cherry. Mm -mm. Oh, I'll clean the fuck out your chimney, mate. No, this is a different service. Oi, why don't you let me in your house? I'll come and clean the chimney for you. Let me in your 
else's crevasses. Oh, crevasses. You know those other guys? There was like 50 guys in that street sweeping gang. Okay. You know one or two of them are a little sleazy. Oh, yeah. One out of every how many guys <laughs> Come is sleazy. On. There's like 50 guys all dancing around. Yeah. I would There's say two of mostly. them are a little dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Someone you don't want in your home. You don't want it. They leave with pockets of stuff. Well, that's why we've got the in-house crew and the up-house crew. And I used to be on the in-house crew, but then I started stealing bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> stealing, smelling. Give me a sniff. <laughs> Pocket full of bloomers. Exactly. This is the one that got he cut out. a song about it. It's actually pretty good. Oh, God. Pocket full of bloomers. I like it better than that fucking step in time shit. Don't like it. What's Never the, liked that. What's the one they sing on the roof? I don't remember that. Dun, 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 step in time. Dun, 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 step in time. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Is it that one? Man, what a Holy what is that? Shit. Is that one of those things that's really about something else? Or the whole is that song just or, about... the, or that's the whole movie or the song? What is the movie about? Mary Poppins? Oh, they were part of the Mary Poppins. Yeah. Group. Man, I'm too far removed from these memories. Been a while since you've seen Mary Poppins? Yeah, I thought the whole movie was about um, chimney sweeps for a second. Yeah, it's Step in Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Step in Time 2, bring it. Oh, so Step in Time <laughs> has Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jim, Cherry. Yes. I clean all your chimneys and sniff your panty. <laughs> Don't okay. let me it's around okay. all your kids or your pets, <laughs> or, or or even around your old Vietnam vets. Boys, <laughs> <laughs> the other walls are okay. I'm <laughs> fine with the other walls, <laughs> but I can't keep me hands off them Vietnam vets. <laughs> anyway, but uh, <clears throat> that song was like fine <laughs> and uh they definitely clean chimneys in that movie and i yes. guess that was a whole thing of cleaning chimneys yes but those chimney sweep guys some of them are real perverts i can bet on it <laughs> that's a real pervert job that's gotta be a sweep. pervert job because they're dirty all the time <laughs> yeah those guys go after they're done dancing around it's real nice and friendly for the kids yeah you know they're going oh sure stays getting a pint Throwing a bat with it, boys. With it, boys. <laughs> right? You know they're throwing them back after that. And then they get fucked up and they're like, Oi, Susie Jenkins fucking house. Down the street in it. We can look through that fucking window while she's taking a bath. I know what time she does it. Everyone takes a bath. <laughs> Jim, Jiminy, Jim, Jiminy, Jim, 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 We'll peek through your windows <laughs> and ogle at you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, God. Man, what's going to happen to you? No, oh, fuck. I knew that was going to happen. What too. is that? Is that like a low battery or something? No, it's just the light sucks, dog. That light sucks, dog. Sorry, guys. In the studio today, Mike's testing out some new stuff. Every once in a while when you do production things, it doesn't always go the way you plan. And uh, what'd you call me? So, <laughs> so Mike's just uh, fixing some stuff up for all you video viewers. I know that there's quite a few of you that like to uh, watch the YouTube version of the Dynamic Banter Show. <laughs> Steve's flipping out. I'm losing my goddamn mind. You're fine. You'll be fine. Now we're lit from the other side. <laughs> this is going to be the most confusing episode ever. So right, this is we get a beverage. Get a beverage, buddy. So Mike and I were talking about street sweepers and not those perverts Ooh. from the Dick Van Dyke movie. Right. We're talking about those vehicles that go around your neighborhood and you'll get a ticket on your goddamn car if you're parked in the wrong place for the street sweepers. You understand? Yeah. You've heard of this. It's the bane of the existence of everyone in the city. It's city living stuff. There's a street sweeper comes through. Sweep some shit up. But my question to Mike was, and this is how uneducated in the world of street sweeping we are, and especially, it's strange because I've lived in cities kind of all my life, little cities, little shitty cities, Oxnard, California, whoop, whoop, Oak Park, 
Whoop, whoop. Tarzana. Oh, whoop. North Hills. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sherman Oaks. Oh, 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 oh. And I just have never really quite considered the function of a street sweeper and how it works exactly. Because my thought was, because I've seen the street sweeping cars. You've seen these boys. They got big old walrus whisker brushes up front. <laughs> and they spin around, as far as I know. And I feel like, don't they just spread shit around? Or are they big vacuum cleaners? I don't really know. I've never known. And it as and honestly, we could just move on and not know about this at all. We don't have to learn about this. I'm sure many of you listening know. Someone on the show is like, my dad used to do one of those for years, and one time he shit himself. Here's my poop story. So what we're going to do in the beginning of today's program is we're going to go down the history. We're going to do our we're going to do a kind of history road. In fact, this is almost like a literal history road. Huh? <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> talking about the history of the street sweeper, and I wanted to pull up some fun music, and instead I just pulled up some like weird like Benedictine monks choral like Espiritus Santus Glorius on parian contus. Dude, after work, use I'm going to eat a pizza use <laughs> all by myself. In these little Caesars <laughs> has the thing that's kind of like a pizza and a cousin is called the pizza noodles. And even though we don't like to call people crazy, we can get crazy bread and little Caesars. Even though it's no game, dude, if we rob the pizza place, sometimes you have to go in there with a mask and steal all the pizza Mario Kart Double Dash on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> There's the one guy who really wants to be doing something else. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't stop thinking about it. I don't want to be in this temple right now because it's cold. It's always cold in here. Please get me out of that temple. I don't want to wear this stuff anymore. I just got a cool t-shirt over the weekend and I don't want to wear this long coat. I don't really even need this job. And the only reason why I'm doing it is because my wife wants me to get a job. But I have enough money in the bank. No, no, I have a wife because I took a vow of celibacy. But I secretly got a wife because I want too late that you can't work here if you're married. Whoa. All I did was take off my ring and hide it, and no one ever asked me any questions about not getting married because they would assume I was a better person than taking my ring and <laughs> Also, not to complain about the lodgings or whatever here because everything's kind of free, but the food is kind of tasteless. The food is kind of tasteless, and that goes back to the original point of putting on a mask and going to Little Caesars and stealing all the <laughs> so anyway <laughs> let's talk about the street sweep. let's talk about the street sweeper mike what do you think it does i think it just spreads dirt around and that might just work for the city's needs i'm really trying to put some thought into this answer because it wouldn't make any sense for it to just spread shit around right because what is that doing yeah um, but what is the sweet? What is it? What, what, so let's let's get down to business here. <laughs> let's start the show. Let's start the show. Hold on, Mike. Let's let's let let's take. I know you're putting your hair up, but let's let our hair down for a second here. No, I think if we're getting down to business, you put your hair up. 
Here's let's get up to business. Okay, that I can get. Let's down get up to something. <laughs> <laughs> let's get up to. Let's 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 get started. The show is exhausting. What are we listen. talking about with sweeping? <laughs> sweeping is when you get a brush, some kind of horse hair brush. Sweeping is it's um, efficient moving of of garbage, getting garbage and sometimes smaller things out of the dang way. Yeah, and then scooping it into what? A pan. And then disposing of it in That's a garbage right. bin. And that, to my, to me, my friend, is how you sweep. So, no, not, not yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, so you'd think the machine does that. You'd think that the machine called a street sweeper would do something similar. So maybe those big old walrus hair brushes they got all stuck to that thing, mm -hmm. brush them into a big old pan underneath the car or something. Or maybe that's why Ugh. the streets are designed to have those runoff, like sewer system. You know how the 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 streets in cities are different than the streets in suburbs. Correct. Where the suburbs don't really have that, like, uh, you know how underneath a lot of the curbs there will be like a runoff yeah, type yeah, thing. Yeah. That um, goes down into the sewers. But we don't even have it. We just have curbs. But the sewers, the sewer lines go to the ocean. Dude, I love that this is something that like a city planner figured out. Oh, yeah. Thousands of and years ago. And they nerded ago. out about it and loved it. Right. Irrigation. And it's just been figured out. And we're here like the answers are out there. Right. But we're trying to figure it out between us at this table. Because <laughs> someone one day was like, oi. You guys ever fucking notice about how this piles of fucking shit all over the fucking street? Yeah, it would start out like, hey guys, and now, don't get me wrong, I love this town. Fuck yeah! Fuck I, yeah, player, no I, cap. I love going... <laughs> 100. I love going to Petey's Pub. Fuck oh, yeah. I love going to General Store. Uh, I'll even take a pooch to the park. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time for meeting. Fuck yeah. Go for a swim down in the pond. Mm, I'll drink it up. Go play cricket down at the place we play cricket at. Absolutely. But the streets. Bit dirty. What do you mean by that? No, nothing's wrong with them. I love the streets. My parents bled in the streets. Let me tell you something. Yeah. If I didn't smell this fighting feces every fighting day, waking up in the morning, big deep breath of my friends and neighbors' shit. Because we dump it out of our shit buckets in it. the street. You gotta dump it. That's a rule number two. Rule, rule number one is also dump it. Punch it. Dump it. Dump. That's the three. So someone was like, let's clean up these damn streets yes. and we'll have a, someone named a street sweeper to yeah, do it. Yeah, they're saying we can't just have shit in these streets because we're all going to die. I think that's how the Black Plague happened. Everyone was just breathing in shit until they're like, we have to sh sweep the streets. A lot of learning had to be done in humanity. And then now you fast forward all the way to today. We have plumbing. We don't shit in the streets, but we do take our masks well, off. Well, I don't shit in the streets. And you don't shit in the streets. And put that and put them on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and flatten them into the street. Yeah. Flatten them into the street. You think what all the turtles we saved from straws are wearing our masks right now? <laughs> You have to tweet that? that right now. <laughs> I don't feel like having any conversations afterwards. You know what I mean? I don't mean, I don't want to so read no any can actual words. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know that? No, that's Dude, very funny. You've got to do that. That's funny. Write it down. Okay. Don't forget this, Mike. We'll see how He's it gonna goes. He's going to do it right now. We're going to see. Remember when we used to do that? We used I to love put that. tweets out and see how they do on the show? Yeah. Do I have to put one out too? You can if you'd like. Anyone can reply. Um, yeah, take out anyone can reply. That's funny. People get mad when you do that. <laughs> no, they just <laughs> they just don't reply. <laughs> they just don't bother. They kind of just give up. I think. I wonder. You'll, you'll get some quote tweets. So let's do that. You'll get more quote tweets, which oh, actually well, might be want. better engagement. Yeah, that's a good social strategy. If anyone is, if anyone does that, 
So here's the deal. I wonder if all of the turtles we saved from plastic straws are wearing our masks right now. <laughs> I love it. People are so stupid. Do you? Are you a good speller? Yeah. I'm a bad speller because I am dyslexic and stupid at the same time. So every time I type something now, even a joke in my phone, I go like this. I wonder if all of the turtles we saved from plastic straws are wearing our masks right now. Well, that's pretty good. What and, happened? and then if she doesn't. Oh, and if it doesn't sound right, you fix it. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a great method. Dude, I write jokes on my phone and I have her say it. And if I laugh at the robot voice, <laughs> I'm like, that's probably pretty good. Is are you you're not like falling in love with the robot voice, are you? No, no, no. I just like that. Um, have you ever seen that movie, Falling in Love with the Robot Voice? Starring the color pink. Yeah. What was that? What was it? Dan and the real cell phone? No, no. There's <laughs> Dan cell phone girlfriend. Dan and the cell, real cell phone girlfriend. Cell phone girlfriend is what that movie was called. No, it was called Her. Okay. And I loved it. So and don't it talk a... shit about it, Mike. I'll fight your ass. Dude, I swear to God, I have no idea what you're talking okay, about. Okay, good. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> I'd rather you never watch it so that you don't have a bad opinion about it. Even if I had a bad opinion, I don't tell you my bad opinions anymore. Because I'm like, why don't you just like what you like? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like a post-pandemic thing. Yeah. <laughs> like everyone just fucking, I don't give a shit. I'll tell you, Mike, I'm a little, speaking of opinions and friends' opinions, and you're going to hear a lot of them in the next few weeks. Uh-oh, how could I avoid that? Especially from your 30-year-old and above friends. Why? Because this evening, the new Ghostbusters movie comes out. Yes. I'm going to see that. Yeah. Are you coming with us? Yeah. That's fucking right. Yeah. Dude, this is exciting. We could do a review on the next episode. Can I say something very old but very true? Please. And I don't care who calls me old about this because sure. this is true. Let's get down to it. I want to go get foamy earplugs before we go to the movie. I want to like go to Guitar Center. Yeah? And get foamy earplugs. Why? Why? It's too loud? Because movies are too loud yeah, and really it takes are. me out of it. They really are too loud. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. It bums me out. Sometimes you want it loud, though. It's like to me, it's like part of the experience, but it's also destroying your hearing. It's too. If it takes me out of being, if it takes me out of enjoying the movie, if I'm like that's loud before I'm like, oh, that's happening right now, then it's it's taking yeah. me out. And you know, a Ghostbusters movie is gonna be loud. We're gonna be blasting ass the whole movie, dude. The whole movie, those boys are gonna be fucking ghosts. Dude, that would also be really funny to do a track where you take there's guys in the theater, yeah, and then you take the track, the movie track out, but you just listen to everyone be like, spaghetti. I love those dining theaters that only serve spaghetti. I love being at an Italian theater. <laughs> My hey, you want to watch it at Ghostbusters? Um, so I'm I'm nervous because speaking of opinions and stuff, we're, we're gonna get a lot of them from this movie probably. Mm -hmm. Because here's the deal, man. We love our Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters. You love the original Ghostbusters. It's a it's a wonderful, timeless, comedic masterpiece, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then part two came out and it was like, OK, not as good, but it's still fun and awesome. And everybody's great. And it, it, it's as good as you could get That's for a Ghostbusters. The Vigo one. The Vigo one. Dude, I've watched the Vigo one 10,000 times. Because of Comedy Central? <laughs> because of Comedy Central. But we had it taped off of HBO. Oh, back. Yeah. That was like I had that and Beetlejuice I think, yeah, on the same tape. Yeah, dude. And uh, and I've seen Ghostbusters one like <laughs> twice. Wow! Yeah, because Ghostbusters two is though. more fun and like a little bit more silly, and it could be watched all day, every day, pretty yeah. much. The uh -huh. original is a little more like you got to give it attention, and there's a little, it's a little grittier. Yeah, dude, that fucking Bobby Brown song in the second Fuck one, yeah, dude, is good. that's still on all of my Spotify playlists. Dude, I had like the cassette single for yeah. that. I went yeah. to this place called the Warehouse. It was a record store. It was like, or it was like a <laughs> cassette tape place. Yeah, you can get your cassette tapes. And I got the fucking Ghostbusters Bobby Brown single on our on your own or on our own or whatever the well, songs. I guess you're gonna have to take control. Gotta, 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 
gotta take control. Gotta, gotta, gotta take control. It is up to us. We got to get it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's and then there's game. a rap that was like, and then there came Vigo, the master <laughs> of evil. <laughs> boys, that's not legal. That's not legal. And then he went and he beat Whitney Houston. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> so, the new Ghostbusters comes out tonight. I'm really scared because I want to love it. The last Ghostbusters movie that came out, despite it being controversial for various reasons. Yeah. I did not enjoy it. Yes. It was fine. It was whatever. It exists. Uh-huh. I'm fine that it exists. Yeah. Didn't really enjoy it. So it's like there's a lot there's a lot of bets hedged on this Ghostbusters movie. I don't remember. I saw that once. I don't remember anything from it. It was fine. It it's a movie. Yes. But this one, it's like if this is good and it does well, mm-hmm. Then we're going to see like a bunch of new Ghostbusters stuff, which is really cool. Ad nauseum. That's the dream. We get yeah. new video games. Yeah. We get new toys. Uh-huh. We get fucking cool shit. You know what would be the um, goddamn worst if it did really well and we got a new Ghostbusters video game, but it was just like, you know, one player versus an- other players and you could buy it's just like another Fortnite, like level up your <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I miss those games that were just like, this is level one. Yeah. yeah. And you gotta do no, this you're to right, get to you're it. Right. But although, now every man, game is the same game. Although, listen, man, you're right. I hear you. Mm-hmm. I, I share your sentiment. Thank you. Um, but if there was an announcement that there was like an open world, oh <laughs> please. There's like an Orton World <laughs> Ghostbusters like massive online MMO kind of thing. Uh-huh. I would probably jizz out. That would only be cool. Listen to me. I'm telling you, man. I got it. I, yes, I think we're on the same page. If you could choose to be a Ghostbuster, yeah, or choose to be a monster, Uh-oh. and you get to design your own monster out of like. Dude, you got thousands of different combinations. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Like a mo- like a ghost designer and like decide oh, yeah. what he does. Yeah. Did you ever play that fucking game? I had it for Sega Genesis. I used to rent it all the time. Don't know what it was called, but the thing was that you were in a haunted mansion and you were a ghost and you would go into like things while the family was coming around and try to Whoa, scare the shit out that? of the family. Fuck my that ass, sounds dude. it sounds like a Beetlejuice game. I don't have a cool enough memory. It was this very it was like a cool 90s game where it like only existed. That's the only place it ever existed. Like somebody wrote this game to be a fun game. I'm going to find and that it. was it. So you were like a little ball of goo. Oh, I found it. Wow, that was fast. It's called Haunting. What it look like? Green guy? Yeah. Green he cool looks like guy? a punk guy with a little with a mohawk. So you would be in this house and Polter like guy. Polter guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, is this Beetlejuice? It's like a Beetlejuice ripoff. Polter Greg. <laughs> so you were like, the family would walk and like try to use the vacuum or whatever. Yeah. And then you would dive into the vacuum and be a scary <laughs> vacuum. And you were trying to like get the family out of the house, I think. Wait, I have to I have to text Polter Christ to someone. Polter Christ. Dude, is that a game that would be like on Steam, do you think? Polter, oh, Haunting? Yeah. Because I would like to play it. But yeah, if, the, if the Ghostbusters game was like that, like you could be, you know, you choose your own fucking Ghostbuster, whatever. <laughs> and then if you could team up with your friends and be ghosts and just be in a building and try to like, you do like Resident Evil shit to yeah. like scare the fuck out of yeah. like these people well, who are trying I, to be good guys. My idea is, is you take like Grand Theft Auto, mm. the whole big giant like city. You O-M got New York World. City. O.M. World. You take the whole fucking city of New York and then you are like new Ghostbusters recruits. Mm-hmm. You're like, 
you're going to train to be Ghostbusters. And everyone jumps in like a Fortnite kind of game, but they're not against each other. We're all trying to get ghosts. Right. But we're all trying to learn to become Ghostbusters, like all at the same time we're leveling up to get better at catching ghosts and stuff. Yeah. Until finally you get assigned your first, like, go catch a ghost mission. And you could do that with your friends, or you could do that alone if you want to. Uh-huh. But there's certain places, like, you'll get a call from someone's house in the, in the city. And, like, you don't get the Ecto-1. Like, maybe you can, like, up, like uh, level up to, to be able to drive it. Yeah. But you've got to get, like, your own, like, Ghostbuster team together. You get you Vespas. Got, yeah, and you get your own vehicle. You can customize it any way you want. You could call it whatever you want. You can add, like, lights and shit to it eventually. Yeah. You start off with a, a bike. Bicycle, right, right, right. And there's just the light in the yeah, basket. Yeah. <laughs> and no yeah. one takes you seriously. Yeah, exactly. And your ghost busting gear is like a vacuum cleaner or something with like some kind of something on it. Vacuum but, cleaner and a flashlight. But like, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That'll work. But uh, yeah, at best you could scare a ghost away or something. Yeah. It. But Didn't that's Luigi, the game. Luigi's Mansion, didn't he have a little vacuum cleaner? Yes, he did. Yes, he did, dude. He sucked up ghosts. I wish I had... Pretty, I'm pretty, a sucker pretty, pretty ghost. ghost. I'm not gonna get a ghost into my vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna suck a ghost. I'll tell you what. Mario, I'm going to tell you what, my friend. If I don't catch the ghost today, I am not gonna not be able to go home and get my dinner. I gotta catch the ghost here in, the, in this in the mansion or I'm not gonna get no dinner tonight. I tell you that. That's a no lie, Mario. That's a no lie. If I don't catch the ghost, I'll tell you what. It's gonna be a big, 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 bad problem at home tonight <laughs> for me, Mario. Yes. Can you just, uh, stop the talk for a sec? <laughs> I'm just a very nervous Mario because if I don't catch enough of these ghosts, as I said before, I am not going to have a dinner tonight. It's going to be a bad night for Luigi at the Luigi house. Hey, hey, Luigi. When I told you that you could live here under Mario's roof with Mario's wife, Peach, I told you you got to keep a talk to a minimum. I'm sorry, Mario. I'm scared. Uh, not catching enough of ghost, and then I'm not getting my dinner tonight. Hey, it's gonna be a bad. Get in at the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Mario! I'm gonna lock I'm the gonna, door. I'm gonna lock you in the basement. <laughs> Anyway, but uh, <laughs> I'm nervous about Ghostbusters, but if it does well, we're going to... Dude, there was there were rumors of a Ghostbusters animated movie. The real Ghostbusters animated like movie? Like Spider-Verse, like done oh, all animated and cool and shit. Yeah, that'd be tight. Where are we at here? All right, we should do some ads. Okay. We can talk a little bit more about opinions and shit if you want. Oh! Oh! <laughs> This is your mid-show reminder to get your tickets to go to the Dynamic Panther Instagram or to go to the MikeBellZone.com Instagram. Click on that direct.me link and you buy tickets for either to see us in Boston on the 1st, to see us in Brooklyn on the 2nd. And you could do either of those things if you want. You could do either of the things. Do either of the things if you want. <laughs> guys let's talk about stamps.com uh, stamps.com has been a uh, well loved sponsor on the program Ooh, we love it we love those stamps I love those stamps who doesn't love stamps I love some stamps and here's the deal if you're looking for ways to skip the trip to that post office uh -huh. and dodge all the hectic holiday shopping traffic why not save time and money with stamps.com skip the trip. Trip, the trip, the trip skip the trip that's right stamps.com lets you compare rates print labels and access exclusive discounts on ups and usps services all year long skip the trip it just makes sense, guys, especially if your business sends more mail and packages during the holidays. Skip the trip. And here's whether you're selling online or running an office or a side hustle, Stamps.com can save you so much time. 
money, and stress during the holidays. You can access all the post office and UPS shipping services you need without taking the trip. You gonna skip the trip. You gonna skip the trip. Never take the trip. You gonna skip that trip. You gonna skip a trip. You gonna skip the trip. You gonna skip the trip. You gonna skip that trip. So the post office instead of using stamps.com is kinda like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Skip the stairs. You just going up a couple of floors? Sure. Well why don't you take the stairs? Walking up 30 flights a day? Uh you could use a break. So if you spend more than a few minutes a week dealing with mail and shipping, stamps.com is a lifesaver. You'll save so much time and money, you'll wonder why you didn't start sooner. <laughs> Skip the trip. So guys, why don't you save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com? Sign up with promo code BANTER for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. You just go to Stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the page and enter that code banter. And in no time, you're gonna skip the tramp. Skip the tramp. Skip the tramp. Skip the trip. That's the end. We're gonna skip the trip. That's the end. Let me do my show, for Christ's sake! All right, thank you so much to Stamps.com. Thank you, Stamps.com. Stamps. Hey, I want some Tushy! <laughs> tushy is a great product, company, service. I'm glad they exist. Here's the deal. It's the holiday season, and you're looking for a gift to get for your family. How about the gift that keeps on giving? You a clean butt. <laughs> the Hello Tushy Bidet. It cleans your butt way better than wiping. It cuts your toilet your paper butt, use butt. down by 80%. It saves trees and all the thousands of gallons of water used to convert them into toilet paper. And it comes with a book full of poop jokes. Excuse me? That's kind of nice. I want a, bu a, bu a book full of poop jokes. My butt is in love with Tushy, and, it, and I'm in trouble because of it. Tushy's kind of Tushy's getting in between me and my wife. My wife. <laughs> Tushy's, butt, kind of, butt. Tushy's kind of ruining my home life. Clean your butt, clean your butt. Just kidding. We love Tushy, and we welcome them into everybody's home, and we hope you would welcome them into your home if you don't have them yet. And here's the deal. A Hello Tushy bidet washes your bum with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. Why don't you get out of the dark ages with that toilet paper crap and jump into the future with the rest of us future beings? You simply spray your dirty butt and then you pat it dry. It attaches to your existing toilet. And there's no electrician or plumber needed. It installs in less than eight minutes and it cuts down your TP use by 80%. Saving money and paper waste. So why don't you make the restroom the best room in your house with the complete Tushy system, including Tushy. Bidet attachment, ottoman, toilet brush, and Tushy stand and tissues. Why don't you join the millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now who take care of their Yule logs in a dignified way. So why don't you give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or your loved ones this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash banner. Right now! You happy? <laughs> <laughs> at hellotushy.com slash banter. That's hellotushy.com slash banter for 10% off. And free shipping. <laughs> Skip the trip. Skip the trip. Skip the trip. <laughs> Guys, HelloFresh is a wonderful 
place, person, <laughs> place or thing. Place with people. It's a person, it? place or thing that I love very much. And uh, HelloFresh is just fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes that are delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip those trips to the grocery store. Skip the trip. And count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Now here's the deal, guys. The holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh keeps things simple with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time so you can spend more of the festive season with friends and family rather than hanging out in the dang kitchen all day, Mom. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Huh? 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 Every time I get a HelloFresh box in the mail, I'm excited because it means I can make something and feel like I made something really fancy. They give you everything you need. You chop it up, you slice it, you pop, you pop it in the pan or the oven, whatever, what have you. Very minimal work, very easy to do. Even I can do it. And then before you know it, you've got a delicious meal for you and some friends or whoever you've got over for maybe like a hot date night or something. <laughs> so guys, why don't you talk about, why don't you go and experience HelloFresh like Mike and I have and do and go to HelloFresh.com slash banter14 and use that code banter14. And why is it banter14, Mike? I'll tell you. Because you get up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash banter14. Use that code banter14. You get those 14 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you so much. HelloFresh. Hey guys, last but not least, by any means, <laughs> let's talk about better help. <clears throat> now, better help, as we've said before, is not a crisis line, it's not self help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And if there's anything interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's very convenient and you can start communicating with someone in under 48 hours. Here's how it works. You send a message to your counselor anytime. You get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And it's more affordable than traditional uh, offline counseling, and financial aid is also available. So guys, here's the deal. I want you guys to start living a happier life. Mike wants you guys to start living it. We both want you guys to be happy. So, as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp by visiting our sponsor at BetterHelp.com slash banter. And it helps the show. It helps you. It helps everybody. How great is that? Real great. You can join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash banter banter great job steve thanks buddy
don't have much time to get good with that, but <laughs> I plan on doing it at some point. It's really fun, man. <clears throat> Mike and I have been talking about how to progress with this messing around we've been doing, uh-huh. and the show might get an upgrade soon in some way. Also, they just came out with a new one of these. No way. Yeah. You're not going to get it, are you? I feel like it's not polite to get that until I get better at this one. Mm. You know what I mean? I told you not to play bass while I'm talking to you. Sorry, man. I just really got to get this bass line down. You asked me a genuine question. Yeah, but I got to walk it now. Here we go. That's pretty good. Thanks, man. Just like sex. Just like sex. Okay. All right. (laughs) Rob. All right. Mike's on. Mike, what do you say we jump right into some History Roads and just go out on the show with a bunch of History Roads? We can do that. You got something you want to talk about? I wrote down two notes. I want to hear it. Let's go. Okay. Um, This is like an idea for a person who would work behind the scenes on a movie, a lighting tech or grip Mm -hmm. named It's a Woman. First and last name is Camera is her first name, which I think is a beautiful I, woman's I name. I like that name. Camera. Camara. That's how people would pronounce it, but it's not. Is this is your name Camara? No, I Absolutely. get that a lot. My name's Camera. It's Camera. And her last name is Zaction. <laughs> with a Z. And so the director would be like, How we doing over there on the lights, camera's action? <laughs> And then the movie would start too soon. Camera's action. And they would waste thousands of dollars on (laughs) takes that they don't need. That's my first idea. I love it. I'm in. And then I said, You got me on that. What do you you think about this? Do you have anything to add to the lights, camera's action? No, I think it's great. I have nothing. Um, Does this. No notes. You know how when. Sometimes you read a meme and it's like that feeling when and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Your face when. Or, or Headspace will text you yeah. and be like, don't you love this? <laughs> yeah. Don't you love to listen to someone painting or yeah, something? Yeah. This is one of those. That feeling when you drop something and it rolls out into plain sight. Oh. What do you think about that? That's wonderful. I dropped something and it, it went in and out of the legs of the couch. So in that short oh, in amount of time. and out of plain sight. I was like. Or just into plain sight is the important part. But I'm telling you what inspired it. Dropped something and it rolled behind the couch. And I was like, gone forever. And then it kept rolling out. And I was like, there it is. (laughs) And that was my favorite. I I love that. That's nice. That's like a little like, that's like a Hallmark card. Yeah. Just like, just like the thing I dropped off the table. Uh, My favorite thing is when you roll into plain sight. And, And then on a cover, it would be like, good to see you again. Yeah. Right, and then that would be in the middle, or it's or the or this says like being your friend. I'm 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 the happiest when I when I drop you off my table. <laughs> the the cover would be like I like dropping you off a table. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see you again soon. Hope to see you again. Soon. Like this thing I dropped on the ground. Just like this thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it says, hope to see you again soon. And then you open it, it goes, just like this thing I dropped on the ground <laughs> that rolled out of sight, but then back into sight. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and it has one of those like little pull strings. And this is why <laughs> you should hire Mike and I to write your Hallmark cards. Yeah. Come up with your television jingles. Or maybe we could just come out with a set of cards. Yeah. That's the answer. Oh, that's fine. I'm done like depending on anybody else for anything else. Yeah. I'm not waiting for Hallmark to lit to find our podcast. Well, the dream is for us to just come up with the ideas and then they do all the work. You know, that's the dream. Yeah, but then they take some of the money. And if it's our good that's idea, good then point. fuck that. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> I'll only like give that. money to people who are necessary in the process. I like that. We're talking whoever wants to design the card and whoever wants to print the card and whoever wants to carry the card to the people who want that. And whoever... I don't want no one in a suit being like, we found the funny guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Weird. Our our cut of the money is being able to find the funny people. <laughs> right, right. We did everything else. No, I love that. I think that's the way, man. 
I, I like that. I agree with you on that. I think that's the way we should we should conduct our business. And I'm writing it down or else it's gone forever. In the future. But yeah, I think we should do dynamic banter Valentine's Day cards. Valentine's and Day cards. And dynamic banter, like, uh, get well cards. Or like, you know, like, what do they call those? Get well cards. <laughs> Condolences. Condo- ha- Hallmark cards. <laughs> I don't think I'd be comfortable doing condolence cards. <laughs> My, our condolences to your lost loved one. And then you open the card and it says, <laughs> but like, get over it. <laughs> That's terrible. That's not the message I want to put but, out. But like, get mind. over it so we can have fun again. <laughs> so selfish. <laughs> Whoever sent you that card is the most selfish person love, who's ever existed. I feel like there's people that would give that to someone. Hey, you're kind of bumming cheeky. me out. Get over it. You kind of want to be cheeky, though. We, we could want, do we condolence cards. Out. We could do condolence cards, but not for like death, for like relationships. Oh, that's good. My condolences. Yeah. I'm done hearing you talk about Tina. My condolences to, yeah, exactly. I'm done hearing you talk about this, just like I'm done something, something. Just like I'm done with this relationship. Just like it's I'm done with this card. sandwich. And then it's kind of like a mostly eaten sandwich. <laughs> right, right. Oh, like it's all the crust left. <laughs> it's a pizza but just the crusts are like thrown into a box yeah i'm done with listening to you talk about tina just like i'm done with this pizza that's good avoid the clap jimmy condolences or i'm done with you talking about your ex like i'm done with this deodorant and it'll show like the end of the deodorant where it's like all gone and it's just like the little stick sticking out yeah all right, shall we some history roads? I'm over your ex like Y and Z. <laughs> wow, that's that's a thinker. I'm ready for whatever comes after your ex, like Y yeah, and Z. You gotta put that that one's got a little think. You gotta put a little think into it. I like that. That card's for six people. I like that. <laughs> you, you can sell that to Think Geek. And they'd like that. You can sell that to Hank Green. <laughs> <laughs> One card. Just make one card. It's a long way down the history road. History road. History road. There we go. Jumanji. Look around me, it's Jumanji. All right. <laughs> Hope I got my malaria shot. I'm in Jumanji. <laughs> it sounds like Steve Martin's uh, King, King Tut, Tut song. Yeah. Now I'm in Jumanji. <laughs> um, all right. Did you see this, by the way? Did I ever show you this? I, I uh... So I'm pointing at a thing that I got at an antique mall and it's like a headshot promotional eight by 10 of Steve Martin. And he has a, he's dressed in a suit. It's like a headshot and he has a fish um, that's coming up out of his suit pocket. And it says best fishes, (laughs) Steve Martin. Is it a legit autograph? And then on the back is like his handwritten set list for that show. Whoa. Do you think that's real? No, I think it's part of like a, prom- I think it's like a promotional card. Whoa. Yeah. But I think it's cool. What if it's real? Is there a chance it's real? Then uh, there's just a valuable thing on you my wall. Cool but also, who is that valuable to? It's valuable to me. Steve Martin. Steve collectors. Martin would want it back. <laughs> Steve Martin wants it. He's like, where the fuck is that set list? I haven't been able to remember the order of my jokes in I years. I wrote best fishes on it. <laughs> it's a good joke. <laughs> Jeremy sends a uh, history road saying audio glitch history road. I know those. Those are the ones that are like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey there, BB boys. Second time rotor day one, big fan and all that jazz. Thank you. I just wanted to share a history road that happened to me recently. Uh-huh. Upon listening to your episode, Corona Feels, the podcast app I used to listen to your crazy fucking podcast, <laughs> decided to malfunction 
resulting in an audio glitch that played the audio from two minutes before over the current audio. Oh, what a nightmare. It was like listening to a cacophony of banter, boy, ear. Ooh, I don't want to say that word. And it was the most dynamic banter thing I have ever heard. Was it a bad word? Well, it was just, it's it's a trigger word. It's the R word of it that pertains to assault. Assaulting. Oh, yikes. I just didn't want to. You yeah. don't have to. I didn't want to. <laughs> that word doesn't have to be in a story about that. Totally doesn't. I hear what you're saying. I get it. Yeah. It is kind of a trigger word, though. So, uh, anyway, just <laughs> being safe here. Just throw, just out. throw out in a jokey email. I mean, you know, it depends on who you are. If this was Andrew Dice Clay, I would expect no less. Does he do that? I mean, he's kind of a foul, gross guy. Says, says whatever's on his mind. <laughs> Kind of like me. <laughs> um, it's the most dynamic banter thing I've ever heard, so I thought it might have been an intentional loop caused by one of the soundboards y'all use to goof things up and meme around. I had to wait until the video released to see if it was indeed intentional and found out that it wasn't, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> That's all for now. Thank you for all the joy you bring us fans throughout the podcast and everything else you boys do. Keep on honking them horns. <laughs> me, <laughs> me. And stop lighting the audience. Peace and love, Jeremy. Stop lighting the audience. <laughs> stop lighting the audience! Thank you for listening, Jeremy. Oh, we got a dire history, dire history road on the Dianetics road. History Road. Matt sends an email saying, hey, honky tonk boys, it's your friend Matt. Please say my full name many times. <laughs> <laughs> he did say it in the sentence, but I'm skipping it now every time as much as, much as I possibly can. I've never heard a good poop story until now last week i had the privilege of competing in the boston comedy festival hell yeah congratulations it, uh, Tom. yeah absolutely uh oop, that's the one i want <laughs> my anxiety uh oh sorry it was a big honor that came with big anxious big anxious is uh... my favorite stone temple pilot <laughs> <laughs> dude <laughs> collaboration <laughs> during the week of the festival uh oh sorry big anxious diarrhea i didn't read that part i like the other one me better. too <laughs> when i feel <laughs> Stay, <man. laughs> cool. during the week of the festival i was house sitting for my parents about an hour away where are you going where the hell you found where you going where the bathroom found <laughs> And I need it, I need it to go to the bathroom. <laughs> On the day of the semifinals, my anxiety was squishing my Lee tummy <clears throat> into a gross time. I went to the bathroom before leaving and hoped and prayed I would make it to the venue without any issues. I really had to go. <laughs> Where is the fucking bathroom? Got town, town. No time in bathroom. To find it, to find it, to find it. I used to love that fucking song. Great song. That was a tape me off the TV song. Good album too. Was that purple? Or is that a different one? I don't remember what any of their albums were called. Yeah. I just remember that there were two albums all the hits were on. Yeah. And then the rest of them were different. You got over too, fat boy. Got was that the same time? band? No. That same was a different era. Band. That was like Silver Chair. Silver Chair. That's and they right. were like, I think they were like 16 years old. Yeah. They were the Hanson of like grunge. No metal. shit. Is that true? That's awesome. I'm almost positive. Um, I also don't know shit. Stone Temple Pilots did. Flies in the Vaseline. We are so down to blow my mind. You get the duck here all the time. And there are you and me. Do you think that everyone in the 90s sounded like that when they talked? Yeah. Like if you were to ask. Let me get a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. If you were to ask that guy for directions. Yeah. You you're going to want to go down to the fork. <laughs> take a layout out of the front of the When he's at Subway. I'll yeah. take spinach. <laughs> Big L. <laughs> How fresh is this salami? Let me get some pepperoni. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so this person went to the bathroom before leaving and hoped and prayed they would make it to the venue without any issues. The sense of urgency and terror consumed me hmm. as I screeched into the parking lot one grueling hour later. <laughs> <laughs> big fan of that uh, i ran into the theater and made a beeline for the bathroom i was on the second show of the night so a handful of my comedy friends from this show first show were standing in the hall this is where time slowed down and the world was in slow motion hey matt good luck tonight buddy Nice to see you. Good to see you. Hey kids, we're home early. Hi kids, we're home early. Nightmare. I greeted and fist bumped all my friends in one continuous movement as fast as I could and burst into the fighting theater, the frightening theater bathroom just in time. <laughs> Digital turds. Yeah. Digital so pudding. Little cockleitas. Little cockleitas. <laughs> I love to hear you say that with an echo. Little <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it to the finals and I'm 98% sure it's because a festival judge used the bathroom after me. Thankfully, I was able to take care of business and have a wicked fun time performing and cheering on my friends. Any hoozle, can't wait to see you boys in Boston, give you a little squeeze, and to leave Kevin the fuck alone. Nobody touch Kevin. No one touch him. Love yous, Matt. Matt's coming to the Boston show. And by the way, speaking of those shows, we're so fucking close to selling those boys out. Yeah, you got to come in. It's going to be so awesome if it's a sold out. out theater. And this is like the biggest show we've ever done is was probably like 150 people. And these have both outsold them by at least like 50 people. Yeah. So please buy tickets. Um, you don't want to miss first. this. Mike Boston. and I are going to be pretty pumped. We're going to be, dude, if there were 15 people there, I, oh, yeah. we'd be pumped. Yeah. But a theater, dude, imagine, I don't know how these places are laid out, but imagine there's a balcony <laughs> and imagine all the seats are filled and then the balcony is also filled. <laughs> but it's, it's instead of like a concert or a stand-up show, dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing fucking farts out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. You're going to hear all these sounds in a giant theater. Can you imagine that? You need to tell me what to tell them. To tell you. To tell me. To, to tell him. Um, I guess I just need a way to hook my laptop up to a sound system and that's it. Okay. And then we're probably going to record that, right? Like we're going to record all of them. I'll figure it out. All right. Uh Jake says, I made a dessert for the one and only Thomas Hanks. That's fucking right. I made a dessert for the biggest man alive known to all mankind, <laughs> big. And I live to tell the tale. The biggest man. Hi, boys. My name is Jake. Say my last name and I take legal action. And I currently work <laughs> at a... Zaction. <laughs> Jake Zaction. <laughs> Jake's, how are we looking at my camera? Zaction. Zaction. Jake's action. Jake, Jake's legal, legal action. I currently work at a nice-ish and hip restaurant in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Heard of it? Once in the bluest of moons, we get a famous face, walk into the old joint, and I have the pleasure as a line cook to prepare them food. Awesome. And yes, Tom Hanks came into the establishment, and I was tasked with slapping a slice a coconut cake right on down to his fucking plate love that the boy ordered a coconut cake i wish i had a like a easily go toable tom hanks impression yeah ah i can't he's always like yelling none of the impressions are him oh, just oh, talking oh, oh, oh. Oh, i got a you got a coconut cake oh, i got a coconut cake wow <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to do it. It's hard to do it. A coconut cake! <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's something... You know what I'm going I for. I want a coconut cake! <laughs> ah! 
What's that? Time to take your meds. I'm about to blow up. <laughs> he commented that I shouldn't have but uh, put micro bits of cardboard into the icing, but that's besides the point. What? Why would you try to poison the biggest man known to man? I reserved the story for a few months now because I wasn't sure to tell the story, but I said, fuck it, here we go. What the fuck is happening right now? I've also made food for the likes of Charlie Puth. P Puff? Puth. Charlie Puth, I think, is the guy on Always Sunny. Reese Witherspoon. Heard of her. And the one of the black eyed pe the black and the one of the black keys, humble Brad. Yeah, I wouldn't know. That kind of both of the people in the black keys look like everybody in Nashville. The end. I <laughs> can't really elaborate much on the story, nor have a really good reason for you to call me. But if you're feeling generous today, give me a ring. He puts his phone number. Steve, think, Steve, it's star 67 to be anonymous. I know you can't always remember. I can tell you about the time I got stung by a stingray, <laughs> robbed at gunpoint, or the time I consumed over a heroic dose of hallucinogens. Thank you so much for reading my email, and shout out to my fellow, fellow Baker host and producer, Baker, Human, Josh, and Leah. Kisses. Oh, fuck yeah. I know this guy. What was the name again? Jake. Jake. I know Jake. He's a good boy. Yeah? Yeah. Right, right. He has a cooking show. Oh, tight. Called, Make me a cake, will you? What is, does he say the name of the show? It does not say. End? It's like the Great Bedtime Baking Show or something like that. And Jesse did their uh, their theme song. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like a group of it's a group of good good boys and girls. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Six. Emily sends a history road saying first successful blank is my favorite blank. <laughs> Hello. I that got implies the the existence of many other failed many attempts. unsuccessful ones. <laughs> Emily says, hello, I got a really short history road for you. My roommates and I recently went on a late night Chick-fil-A run. Ooh. Nope, don't go there. And don't one of them. They actively hate gays. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Actively. Or openly. I openly. don't really know how that works. Openly. And one of them was talking about a musical group whose name I can't be bothered to remember. And she said her favorite member is Robot 2D. <clears throat> I then replied, Robot 2D is my favorite Star Wars droid. <laughs> they both laughed. We didn't get into an accident, and I was thrilled to have my first successful blank is my favorite blank joke. That's great, man. It all works out. Thank you guys for making me a little funnier. I appreciate it. You're too horn honk summer girl, Emily. That's the thing. It's like we, su <clears throat> we have supplied people with a way to be very funny uh -huh. without actually having to be very funny. It's like Mad Libs. Yeah. Or uh, what's that card game? Uh, Cards Against Humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We give you the, we gave you the sauce, the secret recipe. Yeah. You don't have to be funny. You just got to wait for the perfect <laughs> moment. Robot 2D was a perfect moment to say Robot 2D is my favorite Star Wars droid. Yeah. That's perfect. A template. It's like Squarespace. We're the Squarespace of jokes. Yes. Yeah. So see what you got. Let's see what you, I mean, come on. Let's see what you got. All right. Should we do one more? Yes, please. All right. Scrampy doopy doo. Yeah. This is a uh, history road from Rudy. The football player? <laughs> Rudy can't fail. The football player who got the ring? Fart history road is what it is. I know where I should go on my soundboard. You believe in the power of how much money would it take to make you spend a life? Oh, I gotta show you something. Oh, <laughs> that one took the least amount of effort but was the most fun it, the to listen most, to and the most concise if like. <laughs> Rudy says born baby horn boo boys mm, just a little farty history road from Canada I was painting an operator room at a gas plant with a room full of Homer Simpsons what does that mean <laughs> I don't know what literally what does any of that mean what that the 
those words in that order don't you're, ring any bells for me. Your own baby horn boy was listening to his favorite <laughs> fart boys. I get it so far. I was crouched down behind a door next to the break room and paused this crazy loud podcast to eavesdrop on those lazy suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I then noticed my tummy rumble and tumble. <laughs> That's like if you had that part at work, <laughs> yeah. you'd be immediately like, how do I get home? You gotta go home, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go home. I used to have lunch and then I would have too much food and I'd go like, I gotta go home, my stomach hurts. <laughs> yeah. Just because I didn't want to go. Because, you know, just because I ate too much. Like, I gotta go home. I ate too much. Dude, when I worked in an supervisor. office, I would beg to have to shit. Yeah. And please. I would go into the bathroom and I would play, like, Tetris on my Razor phone forever. Yeah, bro, dude. Hell yeah. What a nightmare. Then I noticed my tummy rumble and tumble like it was 2012. And I thought, you know, I could eat a little air. I could let a little air out of my b hole without any sound if I'm careful. Mm hmm. You're playing a dangerous game, bud. Very dangerous. All I hear is these boys next to me talking about hockey and say they, quote, I hope they get into the playoffs. This, <laughs> Then this big giant fart, this little bit of b-hole air turned into a big blast. <laughs> uh -huh. There was a two-second pause that felt like years. I tried my best to not laugh, but I couldn't help but giggle like a little child. So yes, I quickly gathered my things and went home as any sane person who just let out a huge fart in front of strangers would do. <laughs> and just having to go home. Please keep recording your weekly hangs and thanks for the shits and giggles. Rudy, P.S. Shout out to, and there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. All Great, right, man. Dude, so I want to show you this last thing. All right. What I got, got this at me? a record store. Mm -hmm. I've heard of them. And this is an album. <clears throat> and it came out uh, in 1985. Oh. EMI record. That's a great year, man. Back to the Future. Absolutely, dude. Came it's out that year. Compilation album by a, um, a company called Now That's What I Call Music. Oh, I've heard of that. And I had no idea that. Um, they've been doing this for that Since long because yeah. I used to buy the CD albums. Yeah. And it's, uh, the Christmas album, 18 oh. original Christmas hits and right there front and center. Oh boy. I knew it. I knew it. Sir Poo. Sir, Sir Poo. Poole McCartney. Sir. So, Wonderful Christmas Time is on this. Now, my question to you is, why would Wonderful Christmas Time be on this if it wasn't an amazing song? Well, it I could read you some of the other it songs. It was 85. Yeah. Which was when it was a big hit song, I think. Yes. So, I'm going to read you some of the other songs. Okay. And you give me thumbs up, thumbs down, bad song, good song. From Band-Aid... Do they know it's Christmas? Oh, yeah. Way up. Way up. You guys never heard that fucking song? It's a beautiful That's song. A great song. Roy Wood with Wizard, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day. Do you I don't remember know that? that one. No, I don't Slayed, know. Merry Xmas, Everybody. Ooh, Xmas. This is a little rock and roll. Number four on side one, Wham with Last Christmas. Oh, come on. Timeless. Elton John, Step Into Christmas. What's that? Slip Into Christmas. Oh, one, one fucking night, I was coming home in the, to the kitchen to get me a roast. This song's a fucking And I fucking slipped on fucking Chris. Christmas. I slipped into Christmas. Okay, so then at number eight, we have Paul McCartney, Wonderful Christmas Time. Shaken Stevens with Blue Christmas. Not stirred. Song number one on side two. John and Yoko in the Plastic <gasps> Ono Band. Yeah. Happy Xmas, yeah. War is Over. That's a fantastic song. They hated each other so much at this time, they needed to be kept on different sides different of the sides. record. I won't be on the same fucking song. No, dude, 85. So John would have been, John would have passed away 84, I thought. 83 or 84. Oh, yeah, you might be right. <clears throat> so interesting. Keep me on the Maybe it's in his contract. 
<laughs> what Yoko was like to it. Number five on the other side. Uh, the other side too. The Beach Boys, Little Saint Nick. Oh, fantastic fucking song. Number six on the one other side. Is that the one that goes, Christmas comes just once a year. I'm the low voice in the... uh, Christmas is once a year, I think. (laughs) He talks about how many times Christmas is. Christmas is sometimes twice a year. Number six, Queen. Thank God it's Christmas. Isn't it interesting that on the cover, you've got Paul McCartney, but not John Lennon? Like, put John Lennon there, too. Maybe it was too much of a bummer. Maybe. Because they had to put Slade in there. (laughs) Instead. They put Queen on there. Timeless. Slade. Um, And also Roy Wood with Wizard. Yes. Classic. (laughs) And number nine, Bing Crosby with White Christmas. This is a a beautiful Christmas album. It's a great album. So, again, I ask you. Why Paul McCartney Wonderful Christmas Time if it's not worthy of being part of this collection? I mean, I would say let's listen to the ones we're unfamiliar with before we make that assertion. I would love to do that. It's possible those other songs are also not so good. But listen, you know, look, it, it, Wonderful Christmas Time is divisive. Yes. It is just a divisive song. All those other songs, I think aren't so divisive i would also like to take anyone who hates christmas songs in general out of the running yes to totally vote in this. i agree with that yeah i love christmas songs yeah. bring them on baby yeah 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 bring them on i'm ready now also anyone who's ever worked in retail is out of the voting process and hey, raise your hand <laughs> all right guys well listen thank you so much for listening to these boys your boys i want to thank our sponsors i want to thank headgum yes Please check out those sponsors if you want to support the show. Support your bb billies. Mm-hmm. And also, of course, please don't forget, we have, we're have we almost sold out of these East Coast shows. There's, still, there's only two shows, uh, December 1st in Boston, mm-hmm. Massachusetts. Yes. And uh, that's at the Crystal Ballroom. And then November, or sorry, December 2nd at the uh, Bell House at in Bell House Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. And then if you'd like to see me do stand up beyond that on 12 five, I'll be in Bridgeport. Actually, I think I'm going to do a show after our show in Manhattan on, uh, on the second, but late at night, like 11 or something like a that. A show after a show. Yeah. Dog never stops. Damn, dog. And then, uh, on the 10th, when I'm back in Los Angeles, you could see the next surrounded show at the Hollywood improv dude, Steve, Mm. tell the people that they should come to the surrounded oh, show. Oh man, it was so fun. I stayed for three hours of comedy. It was two <laughs> shows and I wasn't sick of it or tired of it at all. It's really fun. It's a cool experience. And if you sit around the comedian, you're going to get ribbed. You're yeah. going to get picked on a or little talk bit. To or talk to. Or talk to. It really depends on the comedian. But it's kind of fun. It's a yeah. fun experience. And, I, and honestly, like not a bad first date spot especially if you want to know especially a lot about if, yes. it's like doing a background check on right your first. <laughs> right and there's nothing better than comedians observing your first date <laughs> yeah dude i remember Keitra saying something to someone there was a lot of really good Relentless. bits yeah a lot of good comedians so i highly recommend it and you're doing something tomorrow night yeah man well tonight actually because this is the show this is today's the show as we live and breathe so as we live and breathe if you live and breathe in los angeles california um there's a late late friday night show happening at 11 30 p.m at the elysian theater in uh frog town i believe is what it's called and that's in Los Angeles, and it's called the After After School Special. It's me, my boy Matt Rob, and Jolie Darrow. We're gonna do some funny shit. We're gonna make. We're basically gonna mystery science theater over after school specials. Great. And we'll probably just do one and do some activities and some fun shit. We'll have some fun stuff planned for you guys. And uh, yeah, if you guys uh, got the time, you live in Los Angeles, please come check that out. Tonight's your only chance. Maybe we'll see. To see this weird show we came up with. It's the only chance to be part of the thing tonight. It's right. literally your only chance. It's your only chance. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hope to see you guys at the DB shows in the East Coast and Mike's shows and my shows. And if not, thank you for supporting the show any way you can. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Check out the show on YouTube.com slash Dynamic Banter. Good job, Ryan. Thank you to Ryan. Shout out to Ryan. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time on the show. Okay. Okay. You've a sweet tooth.